So now, let's go over the history and physical exam findings for hyperbilirubinemia. So, breastfeeding failure jaundice, one of the benign hyperbilirubinemias, we're going to go over the key history of findings that will help you identify this condition as opposed to physiologic jaundice and breast milk jaundice, and also the other forms of jaundice. So first is poor milk production. So something is going on with the mother preventing milk from being produced properly. And some examples of this are hormone imbalance, such as Sheehan syndrome, where the pituitary necrosis with labor and delivery because of loss of blood. And this can cause a damage to the prolactin creating cells in the pituitary, and this will result in decreased milk production. Medication use, OCPs and hormone therapies can interfere with prolactin and decrease the amount of milk production. And also history of breast radiation or surgery. If there's no breast or damage to the breast, the milk producing tissues probably won't work. Next is the inability of the baby to obtain adequate milk. This is a brand new newborn baby. That doesn't mean they're necessarily going to be able to breastfeed properly. It takes some technique. So the baby's not feeding properly, they, the baby will not get adequate nutrition, become dehydrated, and increase enterohepatic cycling, which you mentioned before. So this baby needs some milk. Infrequent feedings. Feeding should normally occur 8 to 12 times per 24 hours. So if you want to make it easier for your mind for considering this, think of it as every 2 to 3 hours the baby needs to be fed. So the baby is not being fed every 2 to 3 hours, the baby is being malnourished. And this is in the first week. Another thing is the baby is not latching onto the nipple properly. If there's a poor latching to the nipple, there's not going to be great milk production and milk release by the nipple and less feeding for the baby. Next. And the most important is signs of dehydration and malnutrition. These are key findings for breast failure jaundice, breastfeeding failure jaundice because this is the reason why the baby is not getting proper nutrition. And the effect of the improper nutrition is the dehydration. So I have this chart here that I found that talks about the number of wet diapers and dirty diapers in a normal child between 1 and 7 days old. So what you can see here is that with the wet diapers, the number of days equals the number of wet diapers until seven days old. So until six days old, the number of wet diapers should equal the number of days old they are. So six days old, six wet diapers. And then for the dirty diapers, which means diapers with stool, you have one, two, two, three, three, four, four. So these are two ways to memorize <clears throat> how many wet and dirty diapers you need for a baby to be considered healthy and adequately nourished. If these numbers are greater than what you see, it's not a really big deal. But the problem is when the numbers are less than these. So if you have a three-day-old with only one wet diaper and one dirty diaper, there's a problem here. And that could be a sign of breastfeeding failure jaundice. And breastfeeding failure jaundice will occur in the first couple days of life. So that's a way to differentiate it as well. So not enough urination in the stools. We talked all about the stool and urinations and how to tell the number. Okay? Another thing is having loss of greater than 10% of infant weight or failure to return to birth weight. So the infant, when they're born has a lot of excess water in the body. So the baby's going to lose all this water and lose some weight before it gains it back. So if it hasn't gained it back or it's losing a lot of weight, that's a sign of malnutrition. And you can see here that you normally gain the weight back within three to five days of life. Um, you lose six, uh, excuse me, you lose 7% of birth weight, the excess water in the first few days of life and regain it back in one to two weeks. Now let's talk about some biliary atresia. This is another important history and physical exam finding that will be very high yield for you on the exam. And this is an example of pruritic jaundice. When you have a bile duct problem that causes damage to the bile ducts and release of bilirubin from the bile ducts, there are liver products in the bile that cause a pruritic jaundice. Pruritic means itching. So if you have itching, it's usually a conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. So itching, usually a conjugated hyperbilirubinemia due to a backup of liver excretory products, and these will cause irritations to the skin. And you get pale stools. Why would you get pale stools? Because remember, the conjugated bilirubin being converted to stercobilin is what gives color to the stools. So if it never reaches the GI tract, the stools will be pale because they don't have the colored stercobilin. You'll also have dark urine because remember, conjugated bilirubin is water soluble. So when it gets lost in the urine, it will add a dark color to the urine, and that'll be a sign of biliary atresia as well. Now let's talk about jaundice treatments, okay? This, we're going to start out with a question because jaundice treatment is one of the most important things we need to know for our exam and how to approach the treatment of the infant's conditions. So let's go over this question to help us understand it, and then we'll go over all the different treatments themselves for benign and severe. What's the best treatment for this infant's condition? Best treatments. Okay, that's what we're looking for. Temporarily switch to formula feeding until bilir bilirubin level drops. Phototherapy. Reassurance, continue breastfeeding. 
stop breastfeeding switch to formula and follow up in a week or admit to the inpatient pediatrics ward so we have some options here we're having an infant that probably has a hyperbilirubinemia and we need to see what we need to do to treat this condition so here's the case seven day old female full-term infant is brought to the clinic by a concerned mother because the female son the infant has suddenly turned yellow the mother is very worried and says that she takes great care of a baby and breastfeeds her 10 times a day Remember, we talked about two to three times, uh, once every two to three hours, eight to 12 times a day. So she is breastfeeding appropriately. Upon questioning, more information is obtained. The patient has seven urinations per day and four bowel movements per day. If you remember from our previous slide, these are adequate amounts of bowel movements and urinations. Infant's cheerful and active, so no major symptoms here. The symptoms all appear fine. Um, and vital signs are normal, and physical exam only shows scleral icterus and jaundice to the umbilicus. Bilirin panel is ordered. Total is 15.2, unconjugated being 15.0. So, what do you think is going on with this baby then? Why is this baby having this um, unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia? Most likely, it's due to a physiologic jaundice. And it possibly could also be due to a breast milk jaundice as well. So, those are our two things that we're considering based on the information we have here. So, what do you think of the treatments? A, temporarily switch to formula feeding until bilirubin level drops. Do we need to switch to formula feeding if the patient is having no problems with um, volume status, no problems with dehydration or malnutrition, is cheerful and active? No, because the number one treatment for babies for growing up for nutrition is breastfeeding. Breastfeeding is way better than formula feeding. So switching to formula feeding is only necessary if breastfeeding is causing excessive problems and symptoms or if there's an improper breastfeeding technique causing breastfeeding jaundice. And this obviously isn't the case here. Phototherapy. We only use phototherapy if there are symptoms or if the patient is greater than 18 in terms of total bilirubin, and we're not there yet. Okay? Um, reassurance, continue breastfeeding. We can hold on to that one. Stop breastfeeding, switch to formula, and follow up in a week. Remember, we just talked about how breastfeeding is the number one way to uh, give nutrition to the baby. So stopping breastfeeding would not be a good idea. We don't want to switch and follow up in a week. We want to just say this is a normal um, effect in an infant. We're going to keep on breastfeeding and not worry too much because it's probably just physiologic jaundice. Or admit to the inpatient pediatrics ward? Not the answer either because this child has no symptoms and just has a high bilirubin. But it's not high enough for us to be concerned. So we can reassure, continue breastfeeding, and follow up later to see if the baby is doing fine. So the answer will be C. Now we'll talk about benign hyperbilirubinemia treatments. So these are the three benign types of hyperbilirubinemia, physiologic jaundice, breastfeeding jaundice, and breast milk jaundice. So let's start with physiologic jaundice. So usually no treatments are necessary because the bilirubin levels are not elevated to an extreme level that you have a risk of kernicterus. Only if the baby is premature and the bilirubin levels are very high in a premature infant, you have to worry about it at lower levels than 18. But otherwise, if the baby is not preterm, you don't usually have to worry too much about physiologic jaundice. Now, breastfeeding failure jaundice. We talked about breastfeeding failure jaundice as a difficulty with breastfeeding and inadequate nutrition to the baby, causing increased enterohepatic cycling. Because breastfeeding is not working, the baby's not getting adequate nutrition, in this situation, you do have to switch to formula feeding. So that's absolutely essential to improve symptoms. And after the breastfeeding has been um, fixed and the mom and baby now have a proper breastfeeding technique together, you can switch back to breastfeeding. But for now, you want to do formula until the symptoms resolve. And you also want to solve any underlying issues that may be decreasing milk production. Another key thing to note is that in breastfeeding failure jaundice, when the child is dehydrated, they can also have orange crystals in the, in the urine, and that's due to uric acid crystals. So uric acid can crystallize and become very concentrated in dehydrated infants, and you might see orange crystals in the diapers. So frequent breastfeeding, monitor weight in diapers, and make sure that the baby is gaining weight properly and having proper bowel movements and urinations. Next, breast milk jaundice. So breastfeeding may be continued if infant is gaining weight and feeding adequately and frequently. So in the previous case, we don't know whether it was physiologic jaundice or breast milk jaundice yet, but in either, way, in either case, the baby was doing fine and the levels weren't high and the baby was term. So either way, you can continue breastfeeding. So you can keep breastfeeding and breast milk jaundice if the infant is doing well, However, if the infant is symptomatic and not feeding properly and is not having problems and symptoms, you should switch from breastfeeding to um, formula for the time being until the patient's symptoms resolve. So like we said, infant, infant symptomatic or not feeding well, then you can switch to formula. Otherwise, don't do it. So I know that was a lot of information, but 
we just learned a lot about treatment. We learned a lot about hyperbilirubinemia, and we are consolidating all this information to enhance it in your memory. So now to further this, write everything that you remember onto this slide. And after you do so, we will come back to the next video and finish off our presentation.